Hey everybody, Bill Owen from MMPC Tech. How are you doing this Friday afternoon? We've got a special treat for you. Jay Warner, our good friend, also one of the best so, uh, community managers and marketing representatives for manufacturers of Case Labs and NZXT that I've known ever is here in the workshop at MMPC Tech. You're in town. Jay, how are you doing? Good. Really good to see you. All these years we've talked online yeah. and we have this opportunity where you're here. And I thought, hey, let's just do an interview and have a live chat go. And we've got Cap'n Curry Sauce as our producer, moderator. And let us know if there's any questions that you have for Jay about Case Labs or NZXT. But Jay, tell us, how did you ever get the job working for NZXT? Um, I was an enthusiast, uh, really passionate, really nutty. Um, <laughs> and I contacted NZXT and I was like, hey, you know, do you guys, do you guys need any, any help? And surprisingly, they, they said yes, uh, you know, and did an interview, phone interview with them because um, I live in, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, and I was going to school at the time and I uh, had a phone interview with them after class one day and, you know, started working not long after that. So uh, I did, uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of help on the forums, Facebook, etc. cetera, um, answered a lot of questions uh, regarding products um, and did, uh, you know, review samples. And in fact, the, the Phantom 820 before that launched, I, I got the first one and... Uh, Wow. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty awesome gig. So, um, and then, you know, school just got to be a little too much. So mm. ended up leaving uh, and focused on that for a while. Um, and that's kind of how I got, got started. So you left school? <laughs> oh, I left NTXT. Smart ass. <laughs> we got Captain Curry Sauce here. You guys remember Captain Curry Sauce from the Mod Zoo? I hope you do. I'm sure you've got fans that are still out there. He's stocking. much more handsome in person. <laughs> not than as, he is on not as good as Captain Curry Sauce. You I don't know on camera. So how does one? I mean, you just you had a a love for NZXT's products, so you were getting involved with the community as a consumer and helping out other people, but. If somebody's watching this and they want to become like a community rep for a company, any advice for them? How do they do that? You know, and, and things in the industry have changed a lot in the last 10 years. Um, so I, I, I really, I don't know if, if this advice is, is going to be 100% solid these days. But what I can tell you is be enthusiastic about what you're doing. Uh, be enthusiastic about the products uh, that you have. If, for example, you, you have a company um, that you don't like whatsoever, you don't like any other products, um, I don't think you're going to have a good time being there. And, I mean, it's, it's the same as any nine to five job. Yeah. If, if you don't like it, don't go for it. Um, just because it's in the, in the industry doesn't make it a good choice. Uh, and I can tell you from experience, uh, if you're not happy in your job, your life isn't going to be as fulfilling as it can be. Hmm. What if um, you get like a million a year? Will that bring happiness? Money always buys happiness. Don't let anyone tell you differently because you can buy a lot of stuff with a mill a year. Yeah. If I had a Lamborghini, would I be happy? I don't know. If it's just me with no friends or a woman in my life, would I be happy? My Lamborghini. You still have hair, so you can get the wind through, <laughs> wind through your hair. Uh, I, think, I think you'll do all right. Okay. Um, no, but, but honestly, and I know modding uh, is, is extremely niche these days. Mm. Um, it's not like it was 10 years ago where, there was, where it was booming. There was a huge yeah. modding scene a decade ago. And uh, honestly, I picked up cases from Craigslist for five, 10 bucks. Uh, 20 bucks. I picked up a ton of Leon Lee cases for like 30 to 40 bucks. Especially now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I took a Dremel to them. I screwed up a lot of cases uh, <laughs> trying to mod them. You know, and I, I would, I'd want to mount a radiator where it wasn't supposed to. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, awesome, this cut's going great. Mm -hmm. And 10 minutes later, screw it up. So it's, it's things you learn along the way and, and building inside of them, you start to learn what you like. Um, as far as materials, as layouts, um, and there, there's, it goes even deeper than that. And 
I know not so much these days, but 10 years ago, uh, drive cages were all the rage. Like, oh my if God. you had more drive cages, oh my gosh, the all the accessories of yeah. uh, the, the fan controllers yeah. and like the, the Cooler Master Musketeer. They even had that one that had um, like a, a tube. A tube in it, like an amplifier tube in it, or something. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, that was a Cooler Master had done that. Is like, uh, no, that was. Um, Lamptron. It? it was Lamptron. Okay. It was Lamptron. Lamptron. Yep. Yeah, that's another old name. What was it? The FC Five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was... I saw one of those on eBay for like two hundred dollars. Oh I guess they're God. pretty rare now. Let us know but, in the uh, comments, yeah. like old school stuff from like. Jay, you had mentioned like the primal golden years of modding was, I would say, two thousand seven ish to twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Uh, within that time, it was just balls to the wall mods yeah. left and right. And I was and making money back then too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's become so niche, and and yeah. I feel I, it, that that does sadden me because. Um, I really feel like some of the best ideas in the industry came out from modders, and it, from a lot of people that I that I know. Um, you know, you've got uh, Bob and Ron um, yep. from BS Mods. Yep, yep. Um, you've got B Negative. I mean, and the the list goes on. Um, the mod father here, Bill Owen, started a lot of stuff that you don't realize in everyday cases now are, are still there. So. Um, I, I kind of feel manufacturers are partly to blame um, for, for the lack of that uh, because they are including a lot of options that we never had. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of... Yeah. A lot they of listened yeah. to us and they watched us yeah. and they finally figured it out what people want. Um, you know, there's a lot of cases out there now with radiator space. And yes. Before, that wasn't a thing. I you know. had to make your own. And now there's so many uh, liquid cooling component companies. you got so many choices now, and the pricing is so much better than it used yep. to be. Yeah, it's nice to have options. Um, I would say one thing that's really kept the market going for modding and liquid cooling is just the fact that uh, so many people are getting into liquid cooling now, mm -hmm. DIY, not just the all-in-one coolers but they're actually building their own loops. And I think that's really helped keep the hobby alive. Uh, yeah, I think in, in trade shows are definitely helping keep it alive. Computex. Because, yeah, we still see uh, a lot of kick-ass mods yeah. from people out there. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you that modding's dead. Uh, that's stupid, that's asinine. Um, but I don't see the, the, the same um, Passion? <laughs> Maybe not Not even passion mm. as the word, but I, I don't see the scope um, mm. being the same. I think it has really shrunk. And, and there are some amazing modders out there today, um, even still. And, and they're, they're really kicking ass. So uh, I would say, you know, really for, for me, because I was able to pull apart cases, see what they were made of, um, it made me understand why things were made the way they are. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to Newegg all day and, and look at a case and say, well, I wish they would have done this, or I wish they would have done that. And until you, you can really understand what goes into making a case or any product for that matter, um, you're gonna think that way. And there's even instances now, uh, after working for two companies and modding God, God knows how many uh, cases uh, where I where I do see there could be a change for the better um, in some instances, but if you really want to work in the industry, I think you you kind of have to have that lower level or maybe it's even a higher level understanding of how things are are built and put DIY. Together. You got to yeah. be a DIYer. You got to be willing to cut up things, change things. Not just not just building. Building anyone can build and put things together, but to uh, modify and change things. I think that's shrunk a lot of people that are willing to pick up power tools or, or learn how to use power tools um, just because, yeah, manufacturers are offering so many options right out of the box. Now, also mention your time working for Case Labs, yeah. who, which was a very well-respected manufacturer of cases in, here in the U.S. and California. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a labor of love. 
honestly. Um, everyone I worked with at Case Labs was, was just simply phenomenal. Um, and, you know, the unfortunate reality is that it came to an end. Um, there will never be a day where I don't appreciate the opportunities I was given um, or, or, you know, have anything but respect and love uh, for Jim and Kevin and, the Keating family. and Casey. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people probably know Casey. He, he was doing uh, a lot of... Uh, Back end customer service work. He, I mean, but he started with them. Uh, Casey was uh, helping Kevin out in the work area, put cases together. Oh, um, and now both of them are are doing Mod One, mm -hmm. uh, the cable sleeving company. Which, if you don't know, best cable sleeves around. Yeah. I mean, that. Yeah, if you're familiar it. with the uh, million dollar PC Nils sleeving, yeah. it's the same thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, they're actually the, uh, I think they're the only U.S. distributor mm -hmm. for yep. MDPC. They worked out sleeping. a deal. I remember when Case Labs was still going, Kevin worked out a deal where they were selling million dollar PC cable sleeving. And uh, when uh, Case Labs closed, Kevin launched his own business, Mod One. And uh, yeah, and they're doing very well. They are. Um, and to this day, like I said, uh, you know, you can't take things like that for granted. It was. It was an experience of a lifetime, honestly, to be in uh, not just an industry, but a, a company that you actually love. Um, I, had, I had never had a job prior to that that I loved, and I haven't since. I, I do like my current job. Uh, but th there, there was a, a certain passion mm -hmm. to it. So I, I would say um, Definitely, if you're, if you're passionate, if you're willing to take risks, chances, you may have to move. Uh, there's yeah. not a lot of companies outside of California right. unless you go somewhere to an, you know, overseas to yeah. another country. Uh, California is kind of the big area yeah. for these, these companies. That's where all their U.S. offices are, you know, because yeah. so that, that's where all the containers come in of all the products from Taiwan. Yeah. So, City of industry, California. Yeah. Were you were you still there when the thermal fake debacle happened, or had you left by that point? Oh no, I was still there. Oh, you were uh, still but there. But I was in Denver. I oh, was, I was okay. living in Denver, so I was still doing part time work uh, and going to school, um, or I had just finished school maybe, and I was I was I became a, a veterinary technician after school, and I was doing case labs uh, as well, um, part time. But then that happened, and uh, hmm. and it you know, that's not why Case Labs closed their doors. Though there was other things going on, it wasn't about thermal take. Um, that was a part of it, but that wasn't the major thrust of why they closed their doors. There, there's way too much to get into. Yeah, I, I could be there for be here for days, uh, telling people things, and and. At the same time, I really don't want to go back to that. Um, you know, it, it's it, what I have are fond memories, yeah. and uh, I kind of want to keep it that way. And you know, Case Labs again, it's it was uh, it was really the enthusiast brand. Yeah, it was enthusiasts. Uh, Absolutely. You will just you will never people who have never owned a Case Labs case or, or never, They'll never built in them, um, you won't understand the feeling. Just when you pick one of those up, uh, there, there's some cases out there that are very similar to Case Labs uh, from other manufacturers. Uh, and when you pick those things up, the case itself is 70, 75 pounds. Um, you look at the SMA8, and that thing was, I think the shipping weight on it was 28 pounds. Okay, and if you ever unpacked one of our cases, you know how much packing there was in that. So It was all aluminum construction. Yeah, every bit. every every And a U.S.-made case, yeah. all aluminum. There wasn't anybody else doing that. And it wasn't flimsy either. Uh, when you opened your side panel, the side panel didn't mm -hmm. wobble. No. Um, it, no. was, it was solid construction. Um, there was, I, I actually... Took a video one day where we uh, dropped a fully loaded dumpster on top of one of our chassis, and it didn't bend. There's a video of that somewhere. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'll find it. Yeah. Um, but it, it took several t attempts with a forklift to drop this dumpster <laughs> on an aluminum case to, to get it to bend. Uh, that um, would be a great gift. Made in the USA. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, uh, unfortunately, it was, it was real close towards the end of my tenure uh, there. I actually um, ended up moving back to Colorado uh, to be with uh, family. But, uh, I mean, the, the construction on those things was just unreal. So it's, it really is a loss for the industry as a whole. Um, I know a lot of uh, people have seen the Gamers Nexus kind of mm -hmm. review yeah. yep, uh, yep. Of, of the SMA 8 uh, revision. Um, and that sadly, that, that came out, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago that video came out. and um, He just put the video out that recent? Yeah, yeah. Um, As a review? Or? Yeah, well, unfortunately, they, <laughs> they had the case. Um, but you can't get it. It's great, but you can't get it right now. But, and it, so it was more of a tribute video. Than, oh, okay. Than a all right, all right, all right. Uh, Flashback video. <laughs> kind of, yeah. And, and, okay. Uh, you know, so Steve over at Gamers Nexus was, was awesome and kind of went through the case. and Keeping the name alive, yeah. really, you know, because... You can see them on uh, eBay. They will appear from time to time. If you go to e I'm sure there's probably, yeah. Well, hey, you it's know. It's a markup now. And yeah. people think Case Labs was expensive before, and now they're not around. Well, <laughs> right. You're going to be paying. You're going to be paying. And to some, it's worth it. Um, I, th there's a lot of people who it's are part of our them out. It's part of our industry history. I mean, you're, you're owning something that's. Yeah. In my opinion, is worth owning at least one Case Labs case if you're into cases and you want something in your collection. Um, another iconic case would be like the Chief Tech. If you can oh. find a Chief Tech Dragon or um, the Apple G5 the tower. G5s. Yeah, get one of those. Even though it's Apple, it's one of the best chassis I still designs have ever. That one I bought from you. That's great. I, I got <laughs> another one from um, Droog, so I've got a backup. So nice. I still have one in my um, arsenal. Sold them, Windy. Do you remember them? Yeah, 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 they yeah. They were like the Those are Japanese, Lee. weren't they? I think so. Yeah. Um, them and Abby. Yeah. Um, Abby mm -hmm. doesn't even, like their site's gone. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, which is crazy. So we're, we're talking about really Get, out we're there. We're geeking out on cases. Stuff. So um, they were awesome. Um, if you've never seen it, my favorite video from MNPC Tech, and I don't even think it was under the MNPC Tech. Well, maybe it was. Oh no, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was uh, Mazu. Or? It wasn't Mazu. It was prior to that. Um, was there was a there was a series you did. It was years ago. On cases or it was on a lot of stuff. Uh, anyways, he he reviews the uh, the Landboy Air. Oh oh good god. Oh that was a Mod Men series, yeah. and that there thing was this one of the stupidest. <laughs> designs ever for a case yeah it was terrible it was just terrible and it was the whole thing was like an open air chassis and if you watch look up uh mmpc tech mod men series throughout the series or maybe it was the last video or something and i think it was four part series yeah it was just uh <laughs> it's hilarious it is the funniest <laughs> video you will ever see in your life um <laughs> i don't know about that uh, it's the funniest video of my you, life. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're into uh, PC case <clears throat> porn, yeah, yeah, then it's 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 good stuff. Um, when Kyle came here, our friend from um, England, when he came over here, he didn't know it, but and he hated the Landboy Air. He's like, I kept that one from the review, and I made him modify it here while he was here on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, um, what we did, the Landboy Apocalypse with it, actually got a lot of. Um, it got a lot of press that build that we did so that was cool and uh but it was funny some people would see like um it was funny because antec was sharing the land boy land boy apocalypse was the build that we did and somebody would say in like the twitter feed hey don't you realize that they totally uh slammed that case in their review of it and there you here you are sharing it that's just kind of funny SSG Smith 51 says, my first PC case mod was with the NZXT S340 Elite. What current NZXT case would you suggest as a good case for modding? Current? Any of them, really. Yeah. 
they're kind of a blank slate, honestly. They're, they're one of the few out there that still actually has metal front panels. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the craze is tempered glass everywhere. So, uh, TG. Un unless you, you know, have a specialized glass shop uh, that you work in and you can mod stuff in, you're not going to get much <laughs> done on most cases these days. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, NVXT kind of started that whole uh, mid plate all through the the bottom chamber area. Um, I know there was bottom chambers in lots of cases prior. Shut up. Um, it, it, it's that L shape that they have at the bottom of their case. Uh, damn near everyone has has made a case like yeah. that since True. NZXT. So um, they nailed it on that. That's a fe feature that everyone loves. Um, I would say throw some fan controllers down there, like the Aquero. Um, if you do a water cooling loop, throw an throw an Aquero down there. Um, that would be, I think that would be pretty sick to see. Um, again, MDXT makes a lot of uh, blank slate cases, and they're relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. um, Good price, yeah, for sure. And and they're they're built solid. So mm -hmm. I would say yep. anything that they have right now is awesome. Yeah. If you can get your hands on them, uh, they're older cases were a lot of fun to work with. Um, Switch 810. Switch 810 is actually what got me the job. When I, I met them. Captain Curry the first time, he had a Switch 810 mod, and it was uh, it was like biohazard theme or something, or, or radiation kind of oh, reactor. The Phantom. Oh, okay. Switch 810, I did the reverse ATX, like the whole thing. That's around. right, that's right. That's oh, yeah. when I started talking. Oh, yep. yeah, an overclock. Yeah, yeah, that's where you guys met. Oh, that's yep. cool. Um, yeah, I, I would say, dude, the Switch 810 was was an awesome case for the time. Uh, even the Phantom 820, I know there was a lot of people that balked at the price when it came out because I think it was like 250 or something like that. It was way higher than any NZXD case yeah. ever. Um, but that was a fun case. I, I did a, a pretty fun uh, build and mod in, in one of those. The Phantom is awesome. In fact, I've got one on the shelf over here that I've been saving for some type of future project. Um, the shell on it, the front bezel and the top is uh, molded plastic. Mm -hmm. It's a very unique design. You can easily cut it up and do your own things on it. Just look up uh, NZXT Phantom and look up like NZXT Phantom case mod in Google Images yeah. and you'll get lots of inspiration Tons. of ideas. Tons. Yeah, lots of mods were done. Um, I can't remember his name, it was David. And he ended up working for Primo Chill for a while. And he had that yellow Phantom yeah. mod that it was yellow and black. I think the Venom? The Venom? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Venom. Yeah. 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 yeah, David Venom. I don't remember what his screen name was, but uh, NZXT Phantom Venom. Look that up at Google Images. Yeah. That's probably still out there. Great mod. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. think my 820 mod was Project 12, is what I yes. called it. Yeah, um, I remember that, man. And uh, I actually removed the, the mesh on the side or uh, side panel and put another plexiglass panel there. Had a custom uh, Aquero what? mount in the front. So all the 5.25 bays were just one solid piece with mm -hmm. a Aquero in it. Mm -hmm. um, got that mounted in there. Custom lighting, um, you know, soft tube water cooling. But that was oh six years ago. We're trying so to bring no Flex seven back. Seven years ago? God. So you're telling me you had no tempered glass, no RGB? No RGB. No RGB. No RGB. Actually, actually, I think that was the first case that had RGB I on it. Yes, it did. Because it had the, oh, the rotary yeah. dial. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's and not it's like the RGB you have today, so you could probably scrap the whole thing. But uh, yeah. Now we're sounding like old guys. I know. But we are old guys. We are old. <laughs> I'm the oldest Can't one help. here. <laughs> Can't. How old do you think I am? It's not the years, it's the miles. Okay. <laughs> this, this thing needs a new engine. You're uh, a Honda, though. You'll go forever. Uh, I'm going to limp along, <laughs> but I'll get there. Um, well, one other topic that we had uh, done with you, Jay, on the Mazu Hangout, remember, um, getting sponsorship, and that's always a question that people ask. Today, the landscape has changed so much with community forums being next to dead. Um, yeah. And that's all Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. How does one now today, if they want to get sponsorship from a manufacturer, do you have any advice for them? Because you used to handle a lot of those inquiries yeah. from people. And it's the advice I gave people throughout the years is the same advice I will give you now is that do your own work. Mm. Um, 
And, and I'm not talking going out, you don't even have to buy the latest and greatest hardware, the newest CPUs and motherboards and graphics cards. Uh, buy some old kit. Even if it doesn't work, um, what, what representatives are really looking for is for, uh, is for the uniqueness. Uh, mm -hmm. What you can do with That's their product true. to showcase it. So you wanna pick up hand tools, electric tools, stuff like that. Um, if you have stuff that you have other people custom make for you, because I understand there's there's some stuff you just can't do. Laser cutting, not everybody yeah. has a laser yet. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there's some stuff you won't be able to do yourself and that's okay. Um, but as long as you're designing it, you're coming up with the ideas, you're putting it together all yourself, um, you can do it for cheap. And like I said, Craigslist, uh, eBay, places like that for, for some older cases, um, if you pick those up on the super cheap to practice on, all the yeah. better. I mean, yeah. hell, you can even go to um, like schools, uh, they'll even have auctions of some old mm -hmm. technology. Um, government districts will yep. even do it. You can pick up a load of Dell cases uh, for a hundred bucks, you know, pick but up on eBay, cases. man, a desktop uh, on eBay Dell shipped, you can get really cheap now, a complete yeah. PC and just practice on that. But I like your point of do something that's unique and original. You don't have to be the next uh, all white case with uh, hardline and no. RGB rainbow in it. Um, it can be an older case. Just try to do something original that, that uh, mirrors your personality or what you're into and show the work that you've done. Yeah. And that gets people's attention. That will get my attention and it's always got my attention is that people actually take the time to go out in the garage cut things up, change things around, paint your own stuff, just DIY versus, if you're just building and assembling it, that's not modding, no. that's just building. I wanna see things cut up, you know, change things up. Um, I would say, and our rule at Case Labs was a minimum of, of three builds. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to see three prior builds that you've done yourself uh, out of your own pocket, really. I mean, if you had other sponsors, great, fine. Um, but really we wanted to see kind of a portfolio, a snapshot of, of what you can do. And then we wanted to see what your plans were going forward mm -hmm. with whatever product you wanted to showcase. Um, so say you had a SMA eight that, you know, you wanted to, to modify. Uh, we wanted to see what that modification would eventually look like. And, um, because you have a portfolio, a portfolio says a lot, um, especially, and it does, they don't even have to be the best photos. Um, as long as we can see clearly what you've done, mm -hmm. um, and from all angles, cable management does matter. Yeah, it does. Um, I don't want to see any bird nests no, out there. No, 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 no bird nests. Today, you um, know, and it, I mean, I love the fact that we've reached this huge level of, uh, expectation for cable management now when I see... Like there's even you know specialized products made for optimal cable management. Mm -hmm. I see that and it looks awesome in that, but I'm like, oh man, I don't want to have to like now I have to reach that level. I have to be like <laughs> that before I share anything that I've done. Now I got to spend hours working on this. It's yeah, just gotten I insane. One thing, the number of builds you see nowadays where they showcase the backside. Versus yes, just the front it's very not true. Everybody uses cable extensions. Yeah. So that nest is hiding under the basement. Yes, door. it's yep. all in the basement. Yeah. Uh, so please, no, no cable clutter. Uh, <laughs> cable management is an art. It, it is. It is. Um, it is very difficult to kind of get a grasp on. I would say the way I did it um, is I would group things, certain things together. So if I had, um, for instance, fan cables mm -hmm. from a certain area, mm -hmm. like a top radiator. I would get all of those cables to go in the same direction, same path to the yeah. same hole. Yep, yep. And I would lock those down at least temporarily until I figured out, okay, where are my sable cab cables gonna go? Okay, now I have those done and it's a nice clean path to where they need to go. Uh, then I would do the 24 pin, um, any kind of temperature sensor cables. I don't know how big so those you were are just anymore. One stage at a time. Uh, just absolutely. Keep, yeah, just break it down to the minimal steps and just plot it out. 
each each component one at a time. And myself, you know, I made my own cables and sleeved them myself, so it was a little bit easier on the on the back end for me to route things because I can measure what I was doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, people who aren't doing that, you don't have to do that. Um, there, are, there are ways that you can uh, kind of figure out a path for, of, of least resistance, but best looking, um, even with stock cables. Um, yeah, if you just take the time. That's it, really and that's what, what it, it is. is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's time consuming. Yeah. And, but, you know, I, I've seen, um, there was many years ago, there was a FTO2, Silverstone FTO2 build someone did where the there was a radiator that slid out from the yes, bottom. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know that and one. And on the back side yeah. of this case, his cables mm -hmm. were almost like they were laser etched into the motherboard panel. They were so clean. Yes. It was just this arch. Mm -hmm. And it was the most mm -hmm. amazing. I've yeah. never been able to find photos since of that build. I know who it is. Um, but God, whoever you are, most amazing thing I, I've ever seen. Whoever you are, call him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I, um, his name's Alan. It's, uh, it's A L A N, and I can't remember his last name, and he's overseas. He's in Europe. It's Alan. And um, he's an amazing modder. However, I don't think he's done a build in quite a few years. I don't know what he's doing now. I, th I think maybe he's restoring motorcycles. I'm not sure, but I know who it is. I know who it is. Yeah. It, I mean, the cable management in that build, if I could find photos of it, I would um, to share with everyone because it was it was phenomenal. Well, he did a, um, one of my favorite mods he did was a Dell XPS tower. The, um, the iconic, which is another case you have to have in your collection if you're into case porn, is the Dell XPS with the yep. aluminum, with the indentation in the center. Yep. All aluminum shell. It's under my workbench here. I have one too. You got that's right. right. Yeah, we got them together. And, and yes, and we did the um, the tutorial with um, Plastidip. Plastidip. We were the first to do a tutorial on that. Look that up. That's yeah, the Dell XPS, and uh, yeah, he did an amazing mod with that case, and also the uh, Deep Cool Tristellar. The uh, oh yeah, yeah, he did a liquid. He was the first to do a liquid cooled build with that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Alan, Alan Simples. Is his name? Sounds like, like Simples. Simples. Yeah, Alan Simples. That's him. You such a simple name, <laughs> I know. Well, so many friends. Uh, uh, they're all close friends too. So funny. Yeah. Any other questions or comments or anything in uh, the live stream? Just, you know, uh, Maddie's text says, "Hey, Bill. What's up, Bill?" A lot of people just hey, stop just, and say hi. And cool. Well, again, this is a rare opportunity. I've known Jay Warner for many years, about at least a decade online when he was working for NZXT and he was working for Case Labs. And um, he has an opportunity because his parents are originally from here in Winona, Minnesota. So he's up here visiting family this weekend. Yeah. And so I thought, hey, let's just turn on the live stream and, and archive this. Uh, anything else? How about this? How about this? What is the worst... So, stories that you have like about dealing with customers. Share some of those, Jay. <laughs> I like I like to hear that stuff so I don't feel like I'm alone. Honestly, <laughs> you know, it, as a in the customer service industry, you have to put up with a lot of BS and yeah. everyone knows that. Oh. In our industry, 99% of it comes from people who want free stuff. Quit asking for free stuff. You're not going to get it. No one wants to give it to you. You're not going to get it. Um, just because you're a, uh, what do they call Twitch it? Twitch streamer, days? maybe? Uh, no, Game a, streamer? Uh, um, an influencer oh. on Instagram. With your 400 followers, yeah. you're an influencer? What, what, what makes an influencer? How many followers do you need before you're an influencer? I don't know. I don't, I don't Instagram. <laughs> I don't Instachat, Snapgram, any of that stuff. All right. Um, Snapgram. Save that, Jesse. Yeah, maybe, maybe. business idea. <laughs> you got the Snapgram. Um, honestly, quit asking for free stuff if you're not going to put in the work to get there. Um, it's a disservice to all of the, the people that work hard every day um, in this industry, both, in in, both for the manufacturers and the actual modders who are out there busting their asses to prove themselves. Um, it's a disservice, it, and it's it's not cool. It's not funny. 
Um, you know, I know a lot, there's people out there who are like, well, I was just joking. Well, that, okay. I don't know. You should see my Instagram uh, private messages that I get oh God, every week. I can only imagine. I shared one on Facebook, the screenshot of it, and it was, um, yeah. yo, I don't even remember. It was like, yo, I'm a streamer, man. What, uh, can I get a PC? Can I get a custom PC? And that was... And it's funny it because, so, li listen, so all of us game. We, we all love video games. I, I don't know if any one of us has ever considered ourselves a gamer. That's never been our, our modus no. operandi for no. why we no. got into this. No. It, it, we look, I mean, if you're a gamer and for our generation, that's somebody that's living in the basement, yeah. unemployed. I'll make, hey, I'll make some money off. Uh, tips on Twitch if I'm really good at this game and no motivation, uh, just... It's different now, but <laughs> that, 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 I, I honestly feel like there's, there's very, there's two different mindsets in that gamers aren't looking to have necessarily the greatest equipment or be modders. No. Um, modders, in fact, I would say Every modder I know games and loves games. As a side thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, and I know some that play them nonstop probably a lot more than a lot of gamers, gamers out there. But, um, listen, it, you really have to have a passion for, for what you're doing. Um, if, if you want a game and you want to make money gaming, awesome. Go for it. Go kill it. Uh, if you want to be a modder um, and mod things and make money at it, you got, it's like anything. You, you're not going to go to NASCAR and they're not going to give you a car just because you drove down the freeway. You've got to be good at racing. you got to right? be a fucking hustler. Wait, yeah. you got to hustle. It, it is a lot of work, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's a lot of work. But the, the rewards are great. And even if you don't make sponsorship or even if you get small sponsorships, uh, the community of, of modders out there is awesome like some of the coolest people I've ever met in my life uh, came from the scene um, these are people that I've held in high regard for years and, and always will uh, I don't you know and there's some I, I haven't gotten along with but there's a lot of people you can get past any kind of difference like anybody um, and it kind of becomes a brotherhood it, it's 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 special so if you're willing to put in the work and the time like I said like anything um, it, it's an awesome place to be. We should have Jesse, and because I think he has some things that he can. Oh, I was just gonna say, if somebody wants a free PC, tell them to go talk to TSA. Oh, if you want a free PC, <laughs> go talk to TSA. They got a warehouse full of them. No, they got prostate checks. <laughs> <laughs> they got prostate checks. <laughs> We actually, because you have not, we should, because you've got some fans from this channel, Jesse. We should have you. Uh, Do I? Yeah, of course. You should Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let go of this mic. By the way. Jay, thank you so much yeah, for no, taking was, the time. And this is my mecca. Day. I've been wanting to come here for a decade. So You made it, and you'll come back yeah. again someday. Oh, yeah, I will. Um, by the way, Bill and Ted, I know everyone's on a Keanu Reeves kick right now. Cyberpunk. So, uh, yeah, so there's Wild Stallions from Bill and Ted. Uh, Are you excited? Oh God. Yeah. It's it's been. Will really it live up to the hype? I don't know. <sighs> I, I am I am not one of those people anymore who buys into hype on anything. No. I'm trying from not Intel, to drink from the Kool Aid AMD, from yeah. Nvidia from yeah. game companies. I don't do it because I I don't want to be disappointed. Right. I don't either. And Cyberpunk's been my favorite genre yes. since like Blade the Runner. 80s. Yeah. Because of Blade Runner. Yep. Uh, William Gibson books, uh, Snow Crash is another great uh, cyberpunk book, if, if you're yeah. wondering. Um, so it's my favorite genre, so I, I'm super stoked yes. for it. I'm just not putting the investment into the hype. And it, it's like movies. Like, yes, like, it is like yeah. movies. Like, it's become like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to get so amped up that, oh my God, it's going to be <laughs> awesome, and then come out like, what, what the hell yeah. just went on? So, um, do I think CD Projekt Red is going to kill it, though? I do. Fuck yeah. yeah. 
I, I say so because so. The Witcher 3 was yeah. phenomenal. I, I'm not even yeah. into games like that, and I loved it. So this... Poland is going to be the future hotbed of PC games for development. Their teams there are amazingly talented, and they are so dedicated as hard workers. The games that I see come out of there, and the games that we'll, we will see come out, are going to be amazing. Check out also Chernobyl Light. Get, check this out. So the game was actually crowdfunded. He wanted $80,000 for crowdfunding. He ended up with $240,000 because people wow. love these developers so much and they believe in them. Was, so, um, was, were the developers from Stalker in Poland? I think so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, it's um, the farm. The development team is, I think it's the farm. Uh, I, I don't remember. So it's been so long, but but the Stalker games are awesome. Too. Yeah, Call yeah. The, the, um, some of the guys are uh, on the team are from the Stalker game. Yep, okay. and also uh, the guys that did Metro Exodus, the Metro Exodus. Yep, they're also from Stalker. But I think the pr yes. I believe the primary guys from Stalker too. And um, what's cool about Chernobyl Light, you know, I love post-apocalyptic themes, is. Uh, they're in the game, it's actually they've scanned the actual zone, the Chernobyl zone. So you're going to actually be in walking through the real zone in the game. So it's like Ubisoft does with their, their games where they go to towns and mm -hmm. Yep, scan they've scanned everything. the whole area. Years ago they did this, and uh, I'm excited for that. Have so. you heard about Google Maps? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, you can't go into the buildings, though. It's all about those buildings that are still there. Right. Well, I know, like, Google street you like in some cases you can even do the in oh, inside yeah. view. Hmm. I don't know about Chernobyl if they'd oh, be yeah. up on <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, there is still radiation yeah. there. I know there's a lot of fantasy in it, but the new Cher Chernobyl series yeah. from HBO. Yeah. I haven't watched yet. I'm oh, I, I, I'm God. yeah I'm I'm looking oh, forward to dive into that. Yep. It's yep. great. Um anyways I'm gonna hand this off yes. to, we get to Captain Curry. Captain Curry on here so we can catch Take up with Jesse. Him. Thanks again, Jay. Yeah, thank you. Here you go. Try to keep it short. Us and we actually got to head over to Greg's from the Mod Zoo. Um, what happened to the Mod Zoo while we're on that topic? Ah, uh, well, without getting into my personal details, Bill knows about them, so I know I had to take a step back. Uh, some medical issues. My beautiful scars, uh, literally did, broke my elbow in eight different pieces. I was told that you might wake up with a new replacement elbow. Thankfully, that didn't happen. So that took a lot of away from me. And I've been slowly starting to get back into another PC mod. Oh, really? Which I just started about a week and a half ago. Mm. So this time around, my plan is to not blow my load early on. So I'm going to... Get everything done and then post it because I feel like a lot of times I'll get a mod going and then have it through, you know, life, life happens. happens. Yeah. I think that's really the bottom line yeah. is life happened for everybody. Yeah. The site's still up and uh, the content's still up and yep. you're welcome to join the forum. And there are some people that have been active on there. Yeah. Um, but I think really it's just life and it becomes a grind, the reviews and meeting deadlines. And yeah. The way thing is like, particularly of video reviews, is that you had to try to, at the time, beat other channels to get right. the product out. And I know one of the things with us at the Mod Zoo, like we always took pride in, even with review PCs, we treated them as, how would I build it if this was my own personal build? We just didn't do, you know, I remember when the Fantex N2 Primo kit came out, the case, I remember this one side, off, it was kind of like, you know, and I saw people like reviewers putting in stock air coolers or a Hyper 212 in a full tower case that's designed for water cooling. <laughs> reviewers were doing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I feel like Modzu was one of the first, you know, review sites to actually push that boundary. But like you said, you know, for us, we did it because we enjoy the hobby. It was now about going big or making money so for yeah. us who have there was no jobs, advertising at all yeah and you could have if you wanted all your sponsors and all that in our form go ahead do it there's yeah. no obligations you could do whatever you want and still to this day you can do that yeah um but uh yeah just the fact that 
we were trying to put a full system in, which was often hard line liquid cooling yep. in a review sample, which no one else was doing. It's just very time consuming yeah. and hard to uh, keep pushing that content out. It, it does, and you know, if you go on the website and look at those review bills, just so you know, for everybody who did those, those were our own components. Yeah. You know, so it costs money, man. It, it does. Those you and parts. Mosquito were like swapping parts to just oh, yeah. get builds done. Oh yeah. And during that, I mean, we had fun, but you know, like you said, life happens. So mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, as life tends to settle down, we'll hopefully be coming up with some more fun here and there. And you know, Eel Ambiance, Jeremy, he's felt the same way. You know, life gets in the way, and there's, he feels bad that he's not doing projects and that. No. But I always told him. The mod zoo will always be there. We'll always keep it. We own it. It will always be there because maybe someday our kids want to get into it. And all that information is archived there. Yep. So it will always be there. Not like these other forms like, well, there's no one around. Let's just, sh well, let's just shut it down. No, man. Keep it archived because at some point, somebody wants to research that stuff on one of those older cases or a mod or something. And just the fact that I want it there. I've been, it, it, when we used to do the Hangouts, one thing that always pissed me off is Droog is all these modders that created these work logs and they never updated their hosting for their photos. Yeah. So you go back to look and reference things, it's all it's gone. gone. Yeah. Gone. Most of that stuff is all gone. You know? So it's just important that we, kept, we keep it intact forever. And it doesn't cost that much no. to do that. So any other... Uh, Comments or anything in the J? There were people uh, asking if Cage Labs would come back. I, I yeah. replied in, in the chat saying I haven't heard anything. Yeah. So. Well, there was, I mean, there was a point when the business was up for sale and there was some... Parties interested. Yeah. Um, but it just, I think it was just too much of a financial risk at the time to go in there and figure... To me, it was the brand. The name itself is what the most value was, Case Labs. Yeah. And people that know that brand knew what it meant. And it would have been cool, or it could still happen, is if somebody buys that brand and tries to still produce that type of product. No. Along with the other stuff, too, to keep the business going. You know, they've got to obviously branch out into other products like grills, accessories, or whatever, and RGB. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. PE for doers says, Bill, I used your etching technique on my Corsair 200R to show my PE emblem. Cool. Nice. Good. There's, there's a wealth of tutorials that I've done oh, yeah. over the years since 2006. I, last I looked, there's, there's over 300 published videos on this channel. <laughs> and there's like everything from the basics that was right. had to be covered. And then with him... We did a series on liquid cooling. We covered everything. everything. And the Modzu was the originator of using PETG cooling in builds. And the hammer test. And the, ham the very first hammer test was done on this channel. And there's a legacy of stuff on this channel that's there. Oh, please tell people to stop using PETG. PETG. Tubing. PETG. Oh. Why stop? I mean, stop using it or use the term? Just stop using it. Why? Acrylic's so much better. Well, acrylic has better clarity, for sure. Yes. Clarity, uh, it withstands heat. The heat tolerance is far higher. Dude, if you're not using tempered glass RGB tubing, <laughs> then you just need to be like, uh-uh. Right. <laughs> is this a family show? <laughs> They're all no. family shows. No, you can say whatever you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... I look at it this way. Um, if kids are still buying the stuff to build their own PCs, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. That's, yeah, that's how I see it. I, was, yeah. I don't care if it's acrylic or PETG yeah. or even soft tubing. Build just something. Building. Yes, just DIY, building you know. yourself. Keep the PC itself alive yeah. as a hobby. Yeah. You know, and like Cyberpunk, that wasn't Cyberpunk 2077, that wasn't developed on a PlayStation or a PlayStation software, that was on a PC. I mean, that's it's always, PC is the first platform that all this stuff is developed on, then it branches out to, yeah. the, to, the, to the consoles and that. The end result is console only. It was still heavily developed yes. Oh, yes. on a yeah. PC. Yes. Yep. 
Oh yeah. When a console is a PC. Which, yeah. You know, it's just stripped down. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I. Theo knows hair. Right now, I'm using a Corsair Vengeance Series C70 Military Green. I bought a side panel window from MNPC Tech and love it. Oh yeah, so that's one of our hottest sellers still. Yes. And what's crazy is that the Corsair C70 Vengeance is now. How many years old is that thing? That thing has got to be seven or eight years old, that yeah. case design, at least. And people are still buying it. That's a good case design. It is. And Simple. I have that white one right there is a C70. People, I have one. You can't see it, but yeah. I've got one in the shop here. And um, I actually was working on developing a vertical GPU mount for the C70 because I knew so many people own that case and still use it. And I thought, well, you could update it for vertical. I haven't I haven't finalized anything yet, so but that's just all oh, that case seems to just live on. Yep. You know, people love it so much. Um Hardware Stack wants to know, Bill, what is the one case you always wanted but never received? I'm a huge uh, modern in Seattle, Washington, and have watched all of your videos. Oh, thank you. Um the one case that I've always wanted and never received. It's funny, the first thing that comes to mind, it was, it, it upset me and it ruined our relationship with the company and I've actually resurrected it recently and it's, back when we were running the Mod Zoo, um, Corsair, or um, Cooler Master was going to come up with the new Cosmos case. And I told them that I, because I had done the Cosmos 2, I, my channel had a huge amount, there's over a million views on my Cosmos 2 project. And wow. with the Mod Zoo, I wanted, with the, they had updated the Cosmos design, and I wanted our site, the Mod Zoo, to review it and get one of the first samples. And the individual there told me, no problem, we'll get it to you. Waited and waited. Maybe it's lost in shipment. <laughs> <laughs> to this day? Could be. It's, it's in the... Oh, it never shipped it. No, it never <laughs> shipped it. Um, and uh, it, it never got shipped. And I recall that other channels had started publishing wow. reviews on it, and I still never got the sample. And it was not only important to me, it was important to the guys on the staff that we had this exclusive. And I felt that we were going to get it and they just ignored us and it made me very upset and I was like that's it I'm not dealing with Cooler Master anymore and I severed ties with them and then uh, this year uh, I reconnected with them and apologies ensued and we had a huge conversation over Skype and that's what uh, resulted in me doing the recent Dirt Rally 2.0 build with the uh, SL600M and they, here's the thing with Cooler Master, they actually, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, I don't know how deep you are into the industry, but Cooler Master kind of lost their direction. And it started with the Master Case series. Um, and we don't need to get into all the details, but there's so much competition for Cooler Master now. You've got NZXT, Fantex, which is really raised the bar. So many other case manufacturers that are offering everything out of the box at a great time. which was one of the original OGs to this market, they kind of lost their direction and they lost their foothold. And um, they realized that and they've, re, they've redone their internals, um, their staffing, and they realize that and they want to reconnect with the community again and have that community relationship which they had lost and uh, so that's what they're doing now and uh, also the case mod the uh, Cooler Master case mod competition was I think it was just announced you can look it up and you can register if you want to enter that but um, my point is is that Cooler Master has changed their ways big time and the fact I think this was the biggest validation is that this giveaway this build that I've done They've made it open to all countries. Nice. It's a yeah. global giveaway. And I'm going to tell you, most giveaways, when it's a hot, the, the main manufacturer funding it, said, no, we want to keep it in the U.S. only. We don't want to deal with overseas entries or people in case it goes overseas because it's a half.
for me. Um, any other thoughts? Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. <laughs> You're also All right. saying there's some static on the line. Is there? Oh. Static from the mic? Or Could be my electrifying personality. Audio? Audio level or just moving around? Is it the mic? I don't know. All right, we're going to end it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Have a great weekend. And uh, thank you for being a subscriber. Yes. And thank you to Jesse, a.k.a. Captain Curry Sauce, and Jay Warner, who's another big-time legacy player in this industry and hobby. Uh, this was fun to chat with you and go look back on the, uh, the golden years yes. of Mario. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, we're gonna. This vid video will be published, so you can leave your comments and questions forever on here, and we'll check them periodically. So, have a great weekend, and have a great summer too. Yes.